Hi, my dear Vataurus Strength, Cosmic Insight Astrology. I am your co-pilot, Christina. Well, I have to tell you, probably you were very happy in April because you had a lot of really great planetary alignment, a lot of Piscean energies, and the Pisces are actually sextiling with your sign. And uh, it's probably, it was very, very happy for you. So I did actually hear your astrology wheel, your Taurus, if your ascendant, your sun or your moon is in Taurus, this is your horoscope for May 2022. All right, let's see what's going to go on. So here, Venus on May 1st. 28 degrees in your 11th house, still going to sextile with Pluto. Pluto is already in retrograde. Actually, it's stationed retrograde uh, 29th of April in your 9th house, and it went retrograde on uh, actually the 30th when we had the partial solar eclipse in your sign. All right. And it was very Venus related, as I talked that, about that before, because Venus is exalted in Pisces, and uh, Venus and Jupiter conjuncted on the same day in 27 degrees, which is actually also Venus exaltation degree. So there was a lot of love around you, you felt it, and uh, maybe you had family reunions, maybe friends came back to your life, uh, or you got some kind of reputation, recognition over here, some kind of court case turned for your favor, for example. So Venus and Pluto on the 1st of May, it's going to actually sextile over here. I love Taurus season. This is my favorite season, uh, season beside Pisces because both of my son are Tauruses, one of them born on May 1st and the second one born on May 2nd, three years difference. And my husband, who is a Scorpio son, has a Taurus rising. So I'm all around Tauruses and I truly have a lot of great Taurus friends around me. So here it is. Ninth house. This is over here, your, your long distance traveling, your higher education, uh, your spirituality, uh, but the spirituality on a way like, like your, if you are, for example, a teacher, this kind of sex type could be really great for you because of maybe you're going to get a recognition, a promotion. Uh, maybe you will, you will get a job, a teacher job, for example, but you didn't get before because Pluto going to retrograde, probably you applied before, but you were actually denied and right now you can go back and they're going to call you again. So that sex type could work out very well for you. So here from Pisces, May 2nd, that's my second son birthday, going to go over here in your 12th house, Aries, Venus. Venus doesn't like to be in Aries. Actually, it's a detriment position for Venus. And uh, 12 house is okay for Venus because uh, that's a Piscean house. So it's not all bad in this situation. Um, so 12 house Venus in Aries, what could be it? Uh, so Aries rules the head. Venus uh, could be something with sweets or it could be like some kind of secret addiction for sweets. So it could be something like, you know what I told my family, I'm not drinking sweet wine or I'm not eating sugar at all, but actually that's not totally true because actually secretly I do. I have a secret stash in the closet for myself and you know, I'm eating whenever I'm upset. Uh, it could be also the 12 house uh, areas could be something like um, initiate something in art and music. So you will actually create some kind of artsy piece of your work, but you are not going to 
put that in front of the public yet. You are not ready yet, at least not for another three weeks, four weeks until it's gonna go to uh, to Gemini over here. No, no, to Taurus in your own sign, um, uh, Venus. So another three weeks, you're still going to work behind the scene in an art piece. Maybe you are painting. Maybe you're going to get ready for a, um, you know, like an art show somewhere. But you know, you're just painting or you're taking the photographs you are putting together right now. So that could happen over here. Okay, so let's see. 11th house, you still have Jupiter here and Mars and Neptune. Uh, we know Juno is here also. Juno is the your uh, loyal marriage partner in your 11th house. It could be like even you get a marriage partner in or gonna marry with someone the third time because 11th house representing third uh, partner, third marriages. Or it could be like loyal partner. You're just going to bring in loyal friends uh, and you're going to have a lot more loyal friends. And so and all the supportive energies are here, right? And then um, uh, Jupiter, actually, let me see the mundane perspective. So uh, uh, Venus went to Aries. Yes, we put that over there. And then uh, May 3rd, actually, May 4th, uh, Mars in, um, in Pisces going to sextile with Uranus. So Mars in Pisces going to sextile with Uranus on 14 degrees, all right. So 11th house and first house. Uranus is the rebel, the initiative. 11th house is social circle. So you know what? You might going to actually support a case where you're going to go and, and uh, protest against something what you believe in. Um, and... Um, or first house is your ego, 11th house is, um, is, um, is your friends and Mars over there. Somebody going to hold a mirror up for you. And that's why you will change because don't forget that is a sex style over here. So the, the change is coming here, not from inside, but outside you have, uh, no, actually you have to work for it, but someone else is going to initiate. Mars is the initiator, but 11th house, someone else is going to initiate that change to, to break down your ego. Um, and, you know, before we had Black Moon Lilith, the mathematical point of the moon, and uh, Eros actually conjuncting with, with Sun on April 30 when the partial solar eclipse happened in Taurus. So Eros and Lilith both is very sensual and sexual energy. And with the Sun, you know, we experienced a lot more uh, libido or we experienced a lot more sexual desire or physical desire for love. And actually it was in your first house. So you definitely felt very attractive and very sensual and uh, right now um, so Juno is here already in Pisces and then on May 20th uh, that's not gonna go to your 11th house and 11th house is uh, good for investment it's money from your career uh, so Vesta is an investment planet so it could be some kind of um, investment going to pay off but through your career so it could be like or I, I got nominated for something through my career and it's going to pay off I'm going to get a big bonus a big paycheck out right now uh, because of my career here and then let's see what is going to what is gonna happen uh, we're going to have actually a Uranus and Sun conjunction on May 4th and 5th in your first house. And sun is your ego. And the first house is your ego. And sun is really representing your career. It's a male energy, fiery energy. It is like uh, also representing your purpose in life uh, as well, just like North Node. And Uranus is over here and those are conjuncting. Uranus is the rebel, the unexpected, the unconventional. So you might going to reinvent some kind of new style for yourself. It could be some kind of new, you're going to change your closet maybe and, and going to say like, you know what, I need new clothes and it's not gonna, I want to be more useful because Uranus loves to be useful, loves to be unconventional, loves to be 
extreme and really, really unique. So you're going to buy some kind of extreme jewelry, perhaps. So that is a good energy here. You reinvent yourself and it's going to be totally different. The people are not going to recognize you. They go, you're going to raise some eyebrow. You're going to be like, people are going to be like, oh my God, what's happened? Is she crazy? Is she crazy? I never saw her to, to have those baggy clothes on or look at his, her earring. So that kind of situation could happen here. And first host, you know, like first host rules, face and, and uh, your eyes, for example. So it could be some kind of tick because Uranus is the nervous system. Some kind of tick is going on on your face or eyes area here. And uh, yes, uh, or because of sun representing your heart, it's rules Leo and your circulation Uranus is representing some kind of vibration in the heart so it could create and first host is your body it could like some kind of electric impulses in the heart could be like like a fib um, uh, fibrosis like you know when when palpitation issues coming up for you so just be mindful go to the doctor it's a disclaimer i'm a nurse not a doctor so you're always going to 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 go to your medical practitioner right this is just advising and you know that's it take it with a pinch of salt all right so here uh, actually mercury was uh, already in gemini and mercury gonna go to retrograde on May 10th, but it's gonna start four degrees in Gemini in your second house. So in your second house, you will have to reconsider the way you are related to your income, the way you are earning money. That's your earning here. That's your wallet. That's your, uh, your value, even, you know, everything, like whatever you own, jewelry, clothes, whatever you own, uh, valuables. And that's also your taste, your thyroid. So Mercury retrograde could be like, okay, go back to the doctor and check your thyroid out, or this is time to recheck your jaw. Mercury overhead, it could be some kind of communication issue because of uh, second house also rules the throat, some kind of infection over there, retrograde going back. Uh, and then it's going to go back to your first house in May 23rd in Taurus, uh, Mercury, which is like, okay, so I'm going to have to work on the way I'm talking to people. And I'm relating verbally to people. So um, it could be also, yes, that's, that's what I would say, Mercury back in your first house, like the way I relate with talking to people here. Okay, so what is going to happen? So Venus is going to be in areas, but May 24th, Venus is going to go to your sign in your first house. It loves to be there. It rules you. It's home. Finally, it's home. He, she didn't like to be in areas. It was uh, not a great energy for it, the fiery energy and Venus, no way. So... Venus loves to be in, in Taurus. It's material, so it's going to to actually bring in some material possession, something like uh, progress in, in a material area. It could be like um, you're going to want to buy more makeups or you want to, to take care of yourself. That is like a retreat. That is like, make sure I look good. Make sure I feel beautiful. Venus is beauty. And I have the foundation because Venus rules money. I have the foundation to buy new makeups, to buy new glasses, jewelry, whatever is that. So that is an also reinvention yourself. Uranus reinvented you in a unique way, but Venus adding uh, love and beauty and, and treating yourself, loving yourself, self-love. So for example, okay, I don't only need new clothes, silly clothes or whatever, or, you know, like not silly, but, but like unique clothes, but I also need something somebody to, to take care of me. So massage therapy, acupuncture, uh, chirotherapy, chirotherapy, whatever you want to, however you want to spoil yourself, do it. This is a Taurus season. Spoil yourself, enjoy your birthday, uh, celebrate yourself. So that's very, very important for you guys over here. 
But, okay, let me see. Mars also going to go to Aries, and Mars is actually going to Aries May 24th, and it's going to be zero degree Aries over here. And Aries is a zero degree Aries is a cardinal degree, it's a third axis. And before Venus was over there in the 12th house, so it means like I'm going to take care of my mental health and I'm going to love myself, I'm gonna meditate. So when it's in zero degree areas, Venus going, then I'm gonna make sure I'm loving myself. I, 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 I pay attention for my emotional and psychological needs. All right, and then let's back put back in, in Taurus, we already talked about that Venus over here, but Mars is going to go in zero degree areas, uh, the cardinal sign and the world axis. It's going to be an initiator. So when Mars moves over here, even if it's 12th house, uh, it is like, okay, I'm ready. I am like, I feel an urge right now. Even if in, it's a secret house and hidden a little bit or in the bedroom, 12 house represent bedroom, Mars is a sexual energy. So maybe I'm going to be active sexually and I'm going to have a lot of mojo. But in here, like I told you before, when, when actually, what was here in 12 house? Venus was over here, you worked on an art piece. But Venus went in your first house, so you would ready actually to, to promote your art piece. And Mars is the initiator for that. I'm not waiting anymore. I, I'm bored. I, it's enough waiting. I have to push forward right now. I have to push that forward. I know I can create and I can bring it on, bring it to the table. So those two energies really love to be home. And, you know, they are far away from each other so right now. They are uh, both in their own rulership and, and they, are, uh, they, they love to be there and they are giving the best result. Um, Yes, and then we do have Jupiter going into areas, and it's going to be May 10th when it's going to ingress areas, zero degree. And as we talked about, that's a, um, a cardinal um, word access over here, but it's bringing some kind of spiritual change for you. And it could be like the, Jupiter is the leader. Jupiter is very positive. It has faith in herself. It is. It has faith to change some kind of addiction, for example. So you are capable to get rid of some kind of addiction. Don't forget why Venus was over here, it could be some kind of sugar addiction. Uh, Mars over here, it could be some kind of anger issue also. Uh, but Jupiter comes over here and said, you know, I'm my own guru. I have faith in myself. And actually I'm capable to, to heal myself and I'm capable to, to get rid of that kind of addiction, whatever. Um, I'm, I'm dealing with uh, and I'm gonna be my own guru so I, I'm going to do it on my own here so that's a very positive or optimistic situation in areas uh, Jupiter here it starts at 12 year cycle for you and in your 12th house and it's a it's a new adventure for you. It's a clean state for you. For example, getting rid of addiction or moving forward, um, moving forward from from um, any psychological blockages, but doesn't serve. I'm not depressed anymore. Perhaps I was depressed before, but Jupiter over here is very optimistic. I found the cure for myself, and perhaps I found it with some kind of swimming because Mars, the 12th house, could be like ocean. Mars could be so sports, so some kind of water sport. And Jupiter also, like I have the foundation, and Jupiter also rules. Pisces as well, so it could be a water sport, definitely, but I can cure myself through that, or Jupiter also through education, I can heal myself, or through some kind of spiritual belief, I have a new faith, um, and, and I heal myself from depression or anxiety or some kind of situation that I had previously. Okay, what else uh, do we have? All right, so Mars going to sextile with Pluto on May 22nd, and Pluto is in your, um, 
ninth house, ninth house of uh, long distance traveling and higher education, and Mars over there, it's like initiating that. So it's an uh, let's go, let's go for travel. Uh, I, I want to see the world. I can't be inside anymore. I, I can't be behind the scene anymore. I want to be seen. I want to go out. I want to meet people. And uh, um, like, for example, it is like, you know what? You were so scared to go back to school because you thought you old or, you know, like you are not enough. But Mars is giving you a push and let's go. I'm here. I'm going to push you forward. Don't worry about that. And, and Pluto wants to do the transformation. So right now, it is like, for example, if you wanted to do your master's for a long time, let's do it. That's what initiating it. And don't forget, Jupiter is in Aries in your uh, 12th house. So definitely that is Jupiter is higher education. Uh, so it could be like, I'm working behind the scene. So I don't have to go in school. I don't have to go in. I can work somewhere behind maybe I have a job and I can do that at night or I can do that on correspondent uh, higher education something like that okay and then Mercury I'm going to put Mercury back uh, you know no because actually it's gonna go only forward and moving direct in June 3rd so we'll be going to stay over here in Taurus for this month um, yes and then let me see Saturn. Let's talk about Saturn a little bit because it's going to bring some kind of permanent ending and completion for you. And it's in your 10th house. So it is in your career. And the North Node, it's squaring with North Node in 22 uh, degrees, 22 minutes. And, uh, and it's going to, and North Node is over here where Uranus and Sun is in this month. And, and Venus and Mercury goes back to retrograde. So that is a lot of Taurian energy. It's really about you. And the eclipse happened over there as well for you. So it's really right now for 18 months, not 18 anymore, but at least for another 14 months, the eclipse season is still around you. It's in your, it's about your ego and your relationship because the axis, the Scorpio axis for you is in seventh house and that's your relationship, one-on-one -on -one relationship or on marriage. So you have to focus on that because you can eclipse something out. If it's not serving you anymore, if you are not stable with your significant others, eclipses getting rid of something. So be mindful with that. Okay, but I'm talking about this Saturn and uh, I'm talking about North Node over here in 22 degrees, North Node, I just gonna say that. North Node is your future life, next life and your purpose in life. So there you are heading and what you have to achieve in this life. And Saturn is, you know, restriction, delays over here. Uh, Saturn can be very good because if you work hard, if you are persistent, if you are diligent, that is always going to give you some kind of great reputation that you deserve with hard work. So for, for example, Nobel prizes, right? 10th house is, is, is recognition. So it could bring in for hard work a Nobel prize for someone who has that kind of square over here with North Nord. Because uh, recognition is uh, the view your self-esteem, your ego is the first one, not, not over there. Yeah, it could be some kind of career recognition. Publication, seen out in TV, media, whatever, seen. Not TV, media, because that's ninth house could be bad. But, you know, like, like seen and be famous, it could bring fame in. But through hard work. You cannot be lazy here. You cannot be like, oh, no, I'm not going to do it, whatever. It, no. You have to work for it. You have to sweat blood for it. Okay, that is Saturn. But it's going to bring in recognition for you. And then uh, it's a permanent ending, a permanent change. So it could be like, you know what? I'm ready to change the way I look. I'm, I'm, I don't want to hold on those kind of beliefs I did before, whatever it's, you know, that peeling down the ego. So whatever didn't serve your growth, it's you getting rid of, it's done. And the Saturn, Saturn can actually create um, 
Vetros and the square with North Node. North Node is um, your future, but it's also the purpose. For example, if I couldn't lose weight with this square, perhaps I might going to be able to lose weight. So it could bring that in as well. Okay, it's a completion. It is completion in career. Sometimes, you know, like, okay, it's end of a swear right now. So I completed that and I'm ready to start something new. And I'm actually have the urge to move forward because the square is always like a push. It's not always negative. People uh, schedule Saturn and schedule squares over here. Don't be because actually it's giving you an extra push to make the change. So that is really great over here. And what I wanted to talk about, so the new moon, April 30th, or in some countries, uh, some of you had it May 1st, uh, in your first house, that was a partial solar eclipse, new moon, uh, and we had all the beautiful planetary ex, uh, aspects like Venus and Jupiter was conjuncting in your 12th house, um, and no, in your 11th house with your friendships, and so probably you get a lot of love from your friends. And, uh, but you know, there it's going to be right now a total lunar eclipse in Scorpio. And actually, it's going to be May 16, 25 degrees, 18 minutes. And in Miami time, it's going to be 12. 14 a.m. And it's going to affect your first house and your seventh house. Seventh house is your marriage or your one-on-one -on -one business partnership, one-on-one -on -one partnerships with anyone. Eclipse is always new or full moon on steroids. It magnifies, it intensifies everything, but ever it affects. And it's going to affect your marriage or your one-on-one -on -one relationship. If something didn't work, it could come to a completion and ending. But if you think you worked on some kind of blockage in your marriage, it could give you a new life. But usually full moon, anyway, it's ending. So it could be like, okay, a bad habit with my partner, like we didn't pay attention to each other. So I was working all the time or I was very selfish perhaps. And I know I need to pay attention, otherwise my marriage is over. So I know you are willing to make the, the change, so eclipse that kind of selfishness out and pay attention for your partner or yes, versa over here. Uh, but that is when it's a full moon, then the sun and the moon is opposite. But don't forget, we have north node in your first house. And when you have north node in your first house, south node is always in opposition. That's a mathematical point again. South node is ending. So it's not enough like full moon is ending, eclipse is ending, but, but also south node is ending. Seventh house, it could be something related with Libra. It could be like endocrine system, uh, kidneys, uh, parathyroid on the kidney, which can have to secrete um, uh, with uh, your pancreas, the insulin. So ending, it could be like, you know, I did have some kind of issues with my kidney. So I'm going to eclipse that kind of problem. What I'm going to solve an issue with like, like uh, diabetes or, or insulin intolerance or, or situations like that. Um, and it could be like also like some kind, and it doesn't have to be your marriage is ending. Absolutely not. There is a lot of Taurus. Not every Taurus going to end their marriage, right? But something in your marriage come to an end. Something what did not serve you, you didn't grow with. So that's going to come to an end. And in the first house, the sun is shining on you. So it's definitely representing like, I'm going to be more... Um, attentive to your, myself. I'm going to do a lot of self, get a lot of planet over here. I want to be more spoiled. I need more attention. And that is the full moon eclipse because the sun is shining on you, on your body, on your ego. So I want to shine. Uh, and uh, yeah, pretty much that's it. And let me see what else is going to happen. So Mars in Aries over here in your 12th house, going to conjunct with Jupiter at three degrees May 29, right before the new moon. Okay, so what can it be? 
it could be, it's really, it's beautiful. Both of them are male energy, Jupiter rather to be in uh, Sagittarius, in fiery energy, uh, and the old avatar of Pisces, but you know, it's a little bit more happier or more freedom in, in Sagittarius, but it, with uh, Mars, it's like extra steroid. It's like initiator, let's go, let's go old. Or, you know, actually it's in your 12th house. So it could be something like, uh, like let's go for a, a long-term vacation. Let's go somewhere where uh, like, like it's an overseas vacation, book a trip on a, a cruise ship. It's representing cruise ship islands. Let's let's book a trip on an island. So it loves to be over here. But you know, investment. It's also good. This is matter, and anything. And uh, twelve house is oil, but uh, it could be something a matter find underwater. I don't know what would be it because I didn't think of that before. But you know, like investing something which is matter but not on the ground, but something under the water. But also it could be like you can invest in oil as well and the investment is going to be uh, significantly uh, good here. And of course, not about Taurus, right? Because, you know, if it just resonates with you to invest in oil or in stock in oil uh, or matter, or, you know, actually, actually you are on the beach. You went for a vacation, right? And this is metal over here. And Jupiter is riches, luxury. So you are there, you are laying out on the beach and you reach out or you're just playing with your children in the sand and you find a diamond ring or whatever, you know, that's, that's luxury. And it's funny, but you know, it could happen, of course. So this could be uh, one part of that. And this... Uh, I'm going back a little bit for this uh, lunar eclipse, uh, uh, full moon lunar eclipse. It's uh, not the most positive um, eclipse. Uh, I'm not really happy about this one because it's in Scorpio. And uh, it's, it's like a lot of detoxification. It is a lot of toxin to get rid of. Uh, so for example, one by one relationship, business partnership, it could be detoxify, some, detoxify someone from your, who you related business wise. It, it just like, let's get rid of them. I'm, I'm not doing business anywhere anymore because there is no integrity uh, with those people. It could be like, um, well, you know, Scorpio could be criminal and it could be some of you might find out my significant other or my business partner is committed some kind of crime or um, some kind of bank related tax cheat or whatever, but that's my significant others could have done that. Um, yeah. So that's what I wanted to say, but there is a lot of positive as aspect for you guys and the new moon uh, going to happen, you know, tag of war between the moon and the sun always full and new and, and full and new over here. And then the moon and the sun in the same sign that's going to be a new moon, but actually it's going to happen May 30 and it's going to happen in Gemini in your second house. It's a new beginning in your financial situation. So uh, you're going to, to have a new beginning over there, which is like, okay, I might going to have some, diff you know, like my taste going to change or, or I going to have some kind of, uh, Hmm. That's not investment. That's your wallet and that's your income. But, but because I reinvented myself in a previous month when I had my birthday and I got spoiled and everything right now, it's going to make you to concentrate not on yourself anymore, but on your financial assets. So that's what I wanted to say. All right, my dear Tauruses, I uh, really appreciate your trust in me to guide you through your spiritual journey and um, see you next month. I'm happy to guide you till we meet again. Bye.